Inkscape received some user interface changes in the development branch over the last couple of months. They aren't groundbreaking, but people who download development builds sometimes can't find a few things they are used to. So let's make a quick overview of the part of the changes that relates to toolbars and a few general look and feel things. First off, you can now resize the toolbox. It's still a single column by default, just the way you are used to. But you can make it two columns like an Adobe Illustrator or even more columns. You'll notice that it looks pretty similar to how Krita works. The big difference is that you can enable and disable particular tool icons in the toolbox much like in GIMP. For that, go to Edit, Preferences, Interface, Toolbars. And here you have two groups where you can click on the respective tool button to toggle the tool's visibility. And you'll notice the changes apply immediately. So if you never use a particular tool and you want to free up the space, you can do that now. The next change is the one that actually got me to record this video. Because someone was watching another Inkscape video of mine and couldn't locate the snapping options toolbar in the recent development build. Here is what changed. The developers removed this toolbar entirely and created this thing. It's a combination of a toggle switch and a drop-down list of options. The switch toggles snapping on and off, and if you click here, you get all the familiar options. It kind of saves the screen space for actual content, and then hand labels next to icons should help beginners to figure out what each toggle does. So for smart guides and even distribution to work, you need these three toggles here. Another new thing here is simple and advanced modes. You can see here a link looking label that says reset to simple. When you do click it, you are left with just three global options. Snapping to and from bounded boxes, snapping to and from nodes, and alignment snap, which is usually known as smart guides. If you prefer more granularity over snapping settings, you can go back to the advanced mode at any time by clicking advanced here. The third change that I want to talk about are the scaling settings. Before, if you wanted larger or small icons in toolbars and the toolbox, you only had a few presets and you had to restart Inkscape after changing from one preset to another. And if you didn't like the new preset, you had to change it to something else and restart Inkscape again. This is all gone now. Edit, Preferences, Interface, Toolbars. Here you have two scale sliders. One for toolbox and one for all the toolbars. And when you drag it, you see the icons change immediately. This gives you way more flexibility and removes the guessing factor out of customizing Inkscape. And there's two more settings to cover in this video. Right on the next page, theming, you will now see two more options. Font scale does exactly what you expect it to do. It changes the scale of the font used in the user interface. So if, if your eyesight isn't very good or your height by display is a little too small, you might want changing the font scale to, let's say, 120%, then click apply and enjoy larger user interface text. You can click here to go back to defaults in a single step. And then the contrast slider is great when you use a dark user interface theme and you think it's a little too dark. I'm not sure why developers picked this particular value range from 0 to 10, it doesn't sound very obvious to me, so maybe that will change. Anyway, that's off now. There have been more user interface changes in Inkscape than that. In particular, some docs got a little smaller than layers and object docs were merged into one uh, and so on. So, all that is quite exciting, but I'm not really sure that developers are done changing things here, so I'll talk about that in another video. Thank you for watching and as usual, many thanks to my Patreon and LibrePay supporters. See you soon.